I'd like to demonstrate for you how we're going to handle these new camera cards with QR codes on them for the type of workflow that helps you minimize the amount of touching and handling of paper product during your school shoots. So first thing you're going to do like always is you'll create a project in HH Schools and you'll import your data in. Then when you do that, when you go to print your camera cards, you're going to print the new report that has the QR codes on them. Same thing as your traditional camera cards except the barcode is replaced with a QR code. It represents the subject ID. So there's all the data. There's printed three to a sheet. And those can be sorted, uh, grade teacher, last name, whatever is easiest for you when it comes to handling them at the school. And then you can also print out your new blank camera cards. Same thing with a QR code. These are the ones where you'll actually fill out the subject's data on it because they weren't part of the original database. So those are two different types of forms that you'll use. And you'll notice I have something, one thing a little bit different here. I've got a table next to the subject and that table has a box on it that I've got that's intended for the camera cards to go into. The idea here is, is we want to minimize the amount of handling on these camera cards. So I don't want the subject to give the camera card to the photographer and all that going on. We're just going to have the subject after they're photographed with the QR code, put it in this box and we'll move on to the next. So the whole process will be the subject will sit down, teacher will have handed them his or hers camera card, which is one with a QR code on it. First shot to be taken is with the QR code visible. So what you want to do is you want to think of putting this in the same general area as you shoot throughout the course of the day. You want to keep that consistent because then we can do our matching much faster once you get back to the school and you import the images in. So first shot will be with the QR code in the picture. Then the subject will take and put that in the box to keep them in the sequence that they were photographed. Then you have the subject sit up and you take a photograph. However many photographs you need to take of that subject, whatever's appropriate, you go ahead. What will happen is that first image that identifies that subject to that QR code and all subsequent images following it will be matched to that data until the next subject comes up and they're going to be photographed holding their camera card with the QR code visible. Be sure to keep fingers away, that sort of thing. Then you'll do that one, have them put them in the box right there, take however many photographs you need, and then move on. So that at the end of the day, there's a minimal amount of handling of the paper itself. I want to kind of emphasize the framing when you photograph the kids with the QR code. So this represents uh, a more traditional, you know, how you would frame each subject. So what you'll do is when you photograph the subjects with their QR code, you want to think of keeping this within the same general region when you photograph them with the card itself. You don't want to slide it way out front here where it's perhaps not in focus and the software can't read it or get it down here or just all over the place. You want to keep it within the same general region. When you do that, then the software has a better chance of reading it faster during the import itself and it'll help speed up that import. So keep it right about the same area every time that you photograph the kids with a QR code. Before we move into the actual live shoot, let's go ahead and create a project in HH Schools, import data into it so I can show you where you print the new camera card report that has the QR codes on it. So here I've already imported data into this project. I'm going to go ahead and select from the drop down camera cards with subject ID QR codes. When you make that selection, you'll see all the same things as far as the sorting options that you're used to. I'm going to go ahead and just select grade, teacher, last name. I'm going to go ahead and we'll do a stack sort. And over here to the right, there's this card footer text. That gives you the ability to add some information to the card that you can print on basically on a project-by-project by project basis. I'm just going to put some information as far as purchase online at www type thing. Um, I'm sure you'll find all kinds of ways you can use this. But now I'm going to go ahead and hit my print button. So here's an example of what the report looks like. It prints three camera cards to a sheet of 8.5 by 11 paper. Across the top you see the, the information as far as presented camera when photo is taken. has the project name, uh, teacher and grade information, the sorting information, the subject's name, you see the student ID. Directly below that, that's that variable text that we added in uh, when we created the camera cards. Then obviously you've got a QR code on here and there's your subject ID in human readable font. 
So that's what the report itself looks like, printed on, obviously, 8.5 by 11 paper. So after that has been printed, then we need to go in and print blank camera cards. So we'll select New Blank Camera Cards. Then from the list down here, I'm going to select Print Subject ID QR Codes. And then you can see here also it automatically carried over from what I had done before as far as the text that I'm wanting to print on these camera cards. Then you can put in however many you want to have printed. I'm just going to put 8 in here. And remember we have this calculator also where you can put a percentage in that it will calculate from the total number of uh, subjects entered in the database itself. But I'm going to go ahead and hit print. Here you can see what the blanks look like. Obviously, there's a spot to put in the last first teacher grade information and student ID, but these are your blank camera cards to be used in the QR code workflow. So next, we'll move on to a demonstration of how we'll photograph a small group of people. Then we'll take those images and we'll import those into a project so you can see how the actual import and editing works. Hi. How are you? Good. Just hold that right up underneath your chin for one photograph. Right, right there. Good. And if you put that in the bin there. Real tall. Good. Let your head tip just a tiny bit. There you go. Perfect. Great. You got a smile. You got one little piece of hair by your left eye. That's it. Got a little bit taller. That's it. Good. Okay. Thank you. Hello. Go ahead and hang on to that just for a second. Does that happen a lot? Okay, have a seat. If you'll hold that slip of paper just underneath your chin for me. Do I have a smile? A little bit higher. There you go. Good. Okay, put it in the bin upside down. Put it real tall. Good. Right there. Perfect, just like that. Good. Okay, thank you very much. Come on over. You can slip your mask off. I'm going to do one photograph of you holding that card real quick, so if you'll pick that back up. Go ahead and sit down. Just hold that just below your chin. Great. And put it in the bin there. And then sit with your feet right on the red print there. Real tall. Good. Now turn your head just a little bit. Right there. You got a smile too. That's it. Great. Okay. Thank you. Hello. If you'll hang on to your slip of paper, just hold it underneath your chin. Great. And put it right there in the bin for me. So real tall. Turn just your head this way, a little bit more. Now, without turning just a little too much, there you go. Good. Right there. Perfect. Thank you very much. You can slip out. Hang on to that. Slip your mask, unless you want to leave it on. Yes, I'm going to leave my mask Yeah, like that's going to happen. Hold your slip of paper right underneath your chin for me. Good, right there. Don't worry, that won't be your yearbook photo. Okay. <laughs> Get in there. You'll flip it upside down. Thanks. Now we can take it real quick. Okay. Did I get all the... Yes. Okay. Sit up real tall. Congest your head right there. It's perfect. Good. And let's get one more. Great. Okay, thank you. Oh. Slip that off. And then hold your slip of paper under your chin. I want to do one photograph. And you go like that. Good. If you'll put that in the bin upside down. And then sit so your feet are on those footprints. Real tall. Straighten this up just a little bit. Good. Okay. Turn your head just a little bit right there. Right. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So what we'll do then when we're all done with this particular camera is we will take these cards, bundle them up, 
and keep them with this camera because this will represent one import into the software and we'll work on that next. Next we'll look at importing the images into our project so we can see what the data match looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and select the import images and data and give this a camera name. We'll browse to our location where our high-res images are located. Select them all. So now for the match data method, we want to select image QR code data. Click the import button. So once it gathers all those images and it has them ready for the import, first thing we need to do is we need to double click one of the images to highlight the repeated QR code position. So if I double click this, this is where I'm going to select where that QR code is generally placed in all of the images so we get a good quick data match. So you can move this all around the screen but obviously you want to keep it in one spot. You don't want to do something like this for a full range. It won't be near as accurate but let's just come in here and just select where it should be for all of them. Click the close button. Then if we scroll across you can see that marqueed area, the QR code camera card is falling into that range pretty consistently. So I'm going to go ahead and just click select QR image. It's going to start the import and match portion of it. So let's go ahead and proceed to edit project. So now you can see we've got all of our images imported in and we actually have a data match from using the QR codes. So you can see this is all one subject here. Same thing here. We scroll across the last subject. This is a subject that we had, you had to use a blank camera card for. And we can either manually type that from the QR code form that's sitting in front of us, or you can double click on an image, move it around, so you can actually type it in here as far as entering that subject's information. So that's a good reason why you want to be sure and get that text on here, whatever you write on the card, as clear as possible so it's legible even though you can zoom in on it in this compare screen. So you want to do all those. Then the last thing you'll do after you've got all of your images kind of narrowed down as far as adding data, that sort of thing, is we need a, a quick and efficient way to get rid of all these QR images. So what I'm going to do is you'll notice here that the image name itself has the actual QR in the actual name of the image that has the QR code. So the other ones do not, but the image that's a QR code image does. So I'm going to use my sorting options under field name. I'm going to select image name, contains text, and the text QR. And that brings into a view all of the images that are QR code images. So I can just select all of those, put them in the recycle bin, and I've removed all of those from the, the main view in the edit project screen itself. So it's just a nice quick efficient way now that you can see another data match method that will allow you to do less handling during the actual shoot itself of paper and still get a good solid data match. The last thing we have to do here now obviously is use the post shoot scan method to scan in package information for these subjects. Music